Today, I want to take a look at an antenna that I've never built before. I don't I really can't find anyone that's built this. It's kind of a, uh, a lift that I, I'm surprised, and it may rival the Ribikoff antenna. I'm going to build an antenna 20 feet or 20.5 feet, 20 feet, 6 inches, 6.25 meters. Um, I'll tell you why I think this length might be a real good one. If you know a little bit or kind of done, been studied uh, random wire antennas, I built some random wire verticals. The uh, the 29 foot vertical uh, is a random wire with a 9 to 1 on on uh, 35 and a half or 35.5 with a 9 to 1 on on both just stellar antennas, really good antennas. And we all know about the Ribikoff. It's 25 feet with a four to one. And then the 17.5 is another shorter antenna, but works great with a four to one. Now, what, what, what do all these antennas have in common? Well, they're called pretty much called random wire antennas. Well, there's uh, some really good information on the internet. There's a, it's a silent key now, but Jack, V-E-3-E-E-D, some information he put up there that kind of explains how a random wire antenna works and, and really why these lengths are not random. Um, what it is is these lengths are not half wave on any of the bands that you want to use. Are there multiples? So, so, you know, half wave and then up to the each step, full wave and multiple on and on. And he's got some really good uh, lengths in there. That's how we got from, you know, they fit kind of in between the resonant half waves. Now, a half wave, you know, has got a real high impedance at its feed point. That's why we use a 49 to 1 or 56 to 1 or a 64 to 1. And those areas in between, you know, where, where the feed point impedance comes down, that's where you can get away with a, a 9 to 1 because it, it's that 9 to 1 will give you close enough to where you can tune it with a tuner or, or a, an antenna tuner, ATU or whatever. Well, if I take a look at it, and you can see that the, it, right in between the, let's say, um, let's say 16 and 19, dead center is 17.5. Then if you go up, that's how the Ribikoff came to be. It kind of fits in the middle there. I'm surprised no one, or at least I can't find any information, or myself has used 20.5. It's dead center uh, the next step up from the 17.5 and, and below the Ribikoff antenna. So I want to build this and see how this performs. Now, 20.5 is the exact length I used when I built my Coastal 20 antenna. Using the 17.5 as the upper driven element, I thought I need to find a non-resident area, era, area, I'm sorry, to do this. But I have never built a 20.5 or 20 and a half foot vertical antenna. Well, I'm at Oakland Beach in Warwick, Rhode Island. I'm going to build this antenna. We'll see how it works. And then um, it's Friday. I just got off work. After that, I'm going to go grab a little dinner. But anyway, stick around. Let's get this antenna up, this antenna up on the air and see how it works. Okay, here's the antenna. This is, you've seen me here at uh, Oakland Beach before. This is over in the parking. I'm, that is due south. This is kind of a uh, rocky parking lot area. Down that way is the actual beach, the resort beach area. Um, that is my seven meter DX Commander pole. I've got coax coming out of the Jeep to it. I'll show you. Uh, down here is a four to one, the four to one on on. And I've got a counterpoise going all the way across. I, I just wrapped, I have no idea. I would say maybe 40, 35, 40 feet long. I wrapped it all together and put it at the edge of the water. And I got some 20 gauge wire, or 22 gauge wire, I'm sorry, going up to the top of the, uh, the pole. So this is, like I said, this is the DX Commander uh, seven meter pole that I have. So that's it. Coax running over here into my Jeep. And uh, I'll go inside and show you what we're doing. And here inside the Jeep, the G90. Now, one thing I didn't mention, this thing is exactly 5 8 of a wavelength for the 10 meter band. Now, I don't know if 10's open today. It doesn't look like it is. Maybe it will be, but um, that is a big bonus. And uh, for check some SWR here, let's see how it turns out just right off the bat. That's, um, what's that, 1.4? That's pretty damn good SWR right off the bat with a 4 to 1 on on. Um, and that wire at uh, 20.5 for 10 meters. I have a feeling and I've had a feeling this is gonna be the winner 
is really going to be awesome on the 10 meter band and i'm probably going to end up using it with my standalone uh, 10 meter band rig uh, eventually but um i'll check some other swr and uh, we'll get on the air here's a 20 meter band as well and that is um i mean 1.6 I'm going to use my ATU and my tuner, but you could get away without it if you wanted to, but uh, that's 20 meters. Uh, 17, 15, this is 15 here, and 12 are all hovering a little over 2.2 to 1, uh, so tuner time. But uh, hey, we did exactly what we're trying to do with the 4 to 1 unun is get the uh, feed point impedance to a level where we can tune it uh, with as much loss as possible, and that looks pretty good. So now we're going to go, uh, let's go see what's happening on the bands. Kilo 4 Oscar Golf, Oscar. Uh, kilo 4? Yes, Kilo 4 Ocean, Germany Ocean. You're 5555 five, five into Rhode Island. The name here is Walt. Whiskey Alpha Lima Tango. QSL, QSL, you are 5555 five, five and 2 Rhode Island. All right, thanks for picking me up. Have a good day in 73, my friend. 73, this is Kilo Bravo 4, Lima Oscar Alpha, Kilo 4, Oscar Golf, Oscar. Kilo 4, Oscar Golf, Oscar, 5-9 into the park, roger. Roger, roger, you're 5-9 into Rhode Island. Thank you so much for, uh, for Rhode Island and 73. 73, my friend. Kilo 4 Oscar, Golf Oscar, uh, N4RLD, uh, good afternoon, thank you for the call, name is Rick and I'm here near Atlanta, over. Roger, roger Rick, beautiful signal, you're 5910 over, I am portable in Rhode Island uh, on the Narragansett Bay in Rhode Island, strange day today, I guess we've had some solar activity, but uh, you are plowing through, just a wonderful signal there, and uh, the name here is Walt, Whiskey Alpha, Lima Tango. Well, good afternoon, Walt. Good to get you in the live book. The first time, good to meet you. Uh, you're five and seven. Uh, you're five and seven here with uh, a lot of QSB. So uh, yeah, the the band is in uh, one of those moods today with the uh, solar flux index up above uh, 200 and something. But I think that uh, the A index is way up there, maybe 10 or so. And I think that's uh, the absorption level and uh, gosh, it's uh, really playing havoc with us here today. It sounds like Walt over. Hey, four zero seven, four zero seven. This is zero four zero. Salty Walt in Rhode Island, waving a hand. High five there, my friend. High five. Zero four zero. Salty Walden, Rhode Island, waving a hand. Have a good one. 73, my friend. Yeah, that was 12 watts, I promise. Well, that was a lot of fun, and uh, conditions are really weird. Uh, 20 meters, just wall-to-wall, kind of domestic, we'll call it, uh, a lot of POTA or whatever. I got in there making a call. 12 was up and down. I'd hear people like fade away. QSB was so weird in 12. I did see there was like a uh, something happening about two hours ago, a little bit of a radio blackout, but um, the, um, the solar flux is up. It's a lot going on. Just trust me. Um, uh, what I was really surprised, and I knew it because that thing is exactly five eighths of a wavelength. The maximum usable frequency here right now is nowhere near uh, ten or uh, eleven meters. Um, so um, yeah, it was pretty cool. And um, you know, ten meters was a little bit here or there. And I tell you what, you get on eleven meters and it's wall to wall. And I swear on my life, I turned it down. To uh, 12 watts, I know that's not an FCC compliant radio, but um, I was as compliant as I could be just checking it out. I wanted to see. I was surprised that I got through. Those guys on there are just pumping power, uh, but it was kind of cool to get Jamaica here. So this antenna, as I suspected, is a great 10-meter antenna, and I'm sure an amazing 11-meter antenna. I'm going to get out here and play with it and spend some time with it um, on both those bands with uh, 
with my um, my compliant uh, Bearcat uh, 980 SSB. I've got that with me, and uh, we'll get back out here with some other. I got another couple radios that I'm going to start using. G90 started getting really hot today. Um, it's it's warm. There's music playing over there, and uh, it's just kind of pumping. So I had to roll the windows up to kind of suffer a little bit. But um, yeah, fun day of radio. Now let's go get something to eat. Okay, this is Iggy's, and this is. In uh, Oakland Beach, Warwick, it's an institution. It's right across the parking lot from where I was operating at. Um, I've eaten here a couple times, and this place is awesome. So uh, let's go order up. All right, what do you think? Okay, okay, what do you think? What do you want to get? I'll, I'll surprise you guys. Okay, here's dinner. Uh, those are stuffed cohogs. And no, Quahog is not a fictional city in uh, Rhode Island. They're a clam, a type of clam here. Some people call them stuffies. Some people call them Portuguese stuffies. I'm going to be a real Rhode Islander today and have the clear. And I got some doughboys. I don't know what a doughboy is. This is um, for us guys that spend most of our life in uh, New Orleans. Kind of similar to a beignet. You can put the uh, powdered sugar on it yourself. It's something similar to that. Don't know if I'm going to eat all of those and have the sugar rush, but. Um, my god this looks good so some nice nice clear chowder and some stuffed clams let's eat oh my god this is so delicious it's just great yeah kind of like a beignet and it's good really good and i'm gonna cap this day off it's a great day one of the most rhode island things ever adele's frozen lemonade Oh my gosh, this is so good. I'm going to sleep like a baby tonight. I got so much sugar in me. I did not eat all of the uh, the uh, Doughboys, so I just ate one. I had to try one. I'm a big fan of beignets when I'm down in New Orleans. So that was, uh, I know I keep saying that, but they are very similar. I'm going to not lie, beignets are better. But the clams, the uh, Quahogs are amazing, really good. And the, I'm, I'm, I buy it, guys. I get it. The uh, clear chowder is really good. Fun day, the antenna. The antenna was amazing. I don't know why I didn't try that antenna a long time ago, that length of wire with a four to one. I'm going to put together a video. I get a lot of questions when I should use a four to one versus a nine to one. It's a lot to talk about there. I'll put a video out on that maybe next week or so. And we'll talk about the, uh, uh, what happens there and uh, when to use what and wire lens. People ask me, how do you find the, uh, impedance at the feed point or whatever I've, I'll put I've done some other videos similar to that but I'll put one together for that as well but fun day uh, 10 meters I did get on 11 um you know you don't like that get mad I don't care I don't usually get on 11 with my g90 matter of fact I think it's the first 11 contact I've ever made on it but I did power it down to 12 I know that's still not an FCC compliant radio but I was 12 watts and I uh, just wanted to see, 11 meters was flooded. And that just shows you guys that we 10 should get on it. I am going to get my uh, fully 100% legal 10 meter rig. I mean, uh, 12, <laughs> wow, 11 meter CB rig out and, um, and play with this antenna as well. Because hey, you can see it worked. It worked well. But um, anyway, fun day. Um, if you like uh, portable radio, making antennas, operating portable, I do it by the sea. And I'm really into that. I'm a, just a coastal guy is what I do. But uh, if you like that, please like and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Walt, K4OGO, waving goodbye once again from Rhode Island. 73, guys.